businesses that are entrepreneurs, self-sufficient and self-sustaining businesses here in Fairbanks. Uh, great. I, well, I think it's a it's a um, a beautiful example of what individuals can do if they don't depend on getting a handout from the government. It's sponsored by Alaskans for Limited Government, and it is happening right over there at Pioneer Park this evening. And uh, look for it, and also look for that uh, speaker tonight. There's also going to be entertainment with the Arlie Giles Band later on. Now, uh, let's shift gears slightly. Joining me in the studio, of course, Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical, the other sponsor of our store. If you are looking for uh, a way to defend yourself physically from any poor decision makers that may try to violate the sanctity of your home, may I suggest you head on over there to Far North Tactical. You got anything new over there today? Uh, well, we got tables down there at the Golden Days Parade. Okay. So that'll be interesting. I don't know if anybody's ever sold guns or body armor at a parade before, but we're going to give it a whirl. Is it at the parade or at the, the downtown, the the festival happening downtown? At the festival downtown. There, there you go. All right, good enough. Hey, the parade is actually still going by our studio outside right now, which is... Which me and my brother and a couple other guys, Dave and whatnot, we have a float in the parade also. And, and it, I, I it, understand it did pretty well. How, how, did, how did it place? It placed first in political floats. Nice. How, how was it decorated? Did you have like uh, some of the the heads of your political enemies hanging from the side? Of it? <laughs> it did have uh, Bernanke on there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Obviously, that was tongue in cheek. Uh, Aaron, as we're looking at uh, this idea of saying no, uh, I mean that is the the essence of freedom, isn't it? If 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 you are not free to say no to someone, then you are nothing more than a slave, right? Well, sure. If you're if you're being coerced to do something, then that's the opposite of freedom, isn't it? I I would say yeah. I mean I mean that that the whole point of freedom of what our constitution it doesn't provide us, but it it recognizes what God has given us, and our constitution basically is that safeguard that, that we're supposed to be able to fall back on in terms of law to say no, look, this law here it restricts our freedom as our constitution here says we cannot. Uh, it's it's basically being made a mockery of, and and, and it's the the jackasses that we have sent to Washington, that we have sent to Juneau, that we have sent across the river over there to the borough building that are doing it to us. I think a lot of it's what Michael was saying. It's really us. Explain that. I've okay. I I wrote something for Facebook the other day, and it has about 81 comments in two days. People got pretty excited about it. Um, mostly people arguing with me. But I wrote, free will is simply freedom from external coercion. So is freedom free will? Yes, it has to be. How can one be free if one is coerced? That's it. So freedom is always going to go back home to roost with yourself. If you're not, if you're allowing yourself to be controlled, then you're not free. It doesn't matter who's holding the reins. If you're not, then you're being controlled. Okay. And if you, but but if you basically decide to submit to somebody else, if somebody asks you to do something and you decide and and you decide to do it, are you still free, or have you exchanged your freedom for a lie? I mean, what I, 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 exactly where do you draw the line on there? Because at some point, most you, of, most of the time, that freedom is exchanged for security, isn't it? Okay. Through social welfareism. Oh, is it a is it real security or just just a, a sense of security? I mean, look at what's going on right now with the TSA. It's a great example. You know, I, I feel pretty secure when they're groping me. Yeah, to you, you know. I mean, that's you know, obviously you're, you're you're resorting to the humor as a way to 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 fight the the issue here that they are wrong. They they I don't think that anybody I have not given permission to anyone to touch me in that way. And, and I don't see how simply by saying that I want to travel is giving them permission to touch me. Well, you have the right to not travel, right? Okay. I, isn't that the argument? Yeah, that's the argument that's being that's being waged. But that is, I mean, that's a that's a specious argument because the real issue is that we have a guarantee of freedom of movement, don't we? Can right. You? I mean, the argument can always be twisted to be put back to you the other way, but actually you have the right to travel. You don't have the right to not travel. That's an oxymoron. You have the Yeah, exactly. And when they start putting up the cameras, which they have now in virtually every street corner, well, you have the right to not – you don't have to go out in public. If you go out in public, you're basically giving your consent to be photographed and to be watched. And I don't, I don't believe that. 
You have the right to not be Jewish, Steve. Okay, there you go. See, now this is, this is where we're starting getting into where a lot of this thing really leads. When it, when it comes right down to it, if if they can put restrictions on us for no other, re- no other reason than we simply walk out the door of our front house, or no other reason than we simply want to go from point A to point B, and we can't go if we don't have our correct papers in hand, or if we do not meet the correct... Uh, well, if we don't submit to their, their searching, their strip search, their groping, whatever else, uh, then really we are at a point of um, state control that is much more serious than people realize. How do we fight it? Uh, the only way you can fight it is to stand up for your individual liberties and even more importantly, stand up for your neighbor's liberties. Now, you see, I think you're, you're on to something there because if you stand up for your individual liberties, you're going to end up getting ground up. In the meat grinder, you're, you're going to end up getting rolled over. It, you you go out there and you don't submit to the TSA. What happens to you? You go to jail. You brother. go to jail. You go to jail. And it, so what what we need to do is stand up for other people. And yet, how many people how many people want to take the time out of their day to go down to a hearing for somebody who's been arrested for something like that? How many people want to go down to the airport and protest the TSA being there? There you go. Or, or, I mean, think about this. Are you willing to go to jail for somebody else? If you're in line and somebody doesn't want to submit to a strip search, are you willing to go to jail for that other person by going up to that TSA and saying, hey, get your hands off? No, nobody is. Nobody is, which is, which is why the, the, these, in, well, what I consider injustices are continuing and why in my, my mind's eye, all I can see is them getting worse. Am I right or am I wrong? I mean, because if I'm wrong, please correct me. Historically, you're 100% accurate. It, there's, it's never going to get better. Well, I, I think historically, if you look at the way that uh, most nations that start out free don't stay free, do they? No, and it's always from within that they fall. All right. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you look at, I mean, one of my favorite is uh, the history of Rome. And, and it, it's been held up as this uh, this great shining example. And obviously there was corruption in Rome. There was graft. There was uh, political intrigue. There were even assassinations that we haven't had the same kind of here in the United States. I mean, obviously we have had assassinations, but it hasn't been a political rival uh, assassinating someone and then taking power. Although I suppose that could happen. Uh, the, the, what caused Rome to fall was not the porous borders. It was not the welfare system. It was not the uh, hordes coming over and attacking them, the terrorists on the on their frontier edges. What caused Rome to fall was the inner corruption, the fact that the people didn't have any character anymore. And I think that we're there as America. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. The same exact thing happened in Carthage. Uh, Carthage fell to the Romans because of their internal corruption. They had twice as powerful of a country, twice the size of army, twice the size of a navy. And because of political corruption, they wouldn't bring any of it to bear uh, out of fear of each other who was going to take power if somebody won. So they fell to Rome and totally and utterly got destroyed. There you have it. Well, we're coming up here on the news in about uh, a minute and a half or so. Uh, Before we get there, is there anything else that you want to touch on today? We're just kind of rambling a little bit here with our, our musings. I want to get to playing those founders quotes again. All right, well, we're going to do that on the other side of the break. Uh, did you hear about what happened down in Juneau? Uh, this, I, I kind of get your impression on this. There was a wooden pedestrian bridge. I actually remember running by that when I was down there. It was on Mendenhall Loop Road. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was this wooden pedestrian bridge that went across uh, right there by Floyd Dryden Middle School. And the whole point was for kids to be able to walk over the bridge, to be able to get to school, et cetera, et cetera. It, a piece of equipment on an oversized truckload knocked out a part of the bridge. And so they they actually splintered the beams and rendered it unusable. So they took down the bridge portion of the structure, and since then all that's left are the wooden cases on either side of the street. Well, they've left those, and they just boarded off the steps. And now they say that the bridge will not be rebuilt due to the extensive work that repairing the structure would take. The state cannot simply rebuild the structure with the short footprint and accessible right-of-way, especially due to, listen, listen to this, due to mandatory compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Given the space limitations, building ramps is not feasible. They said, quote, we could not replace that bridge no matter how hard we wanted to. Even if we had a perfectly good bridge, 
we couldn't do it. Now, isn't this typical of where we're headed right now with the with the kinds of restrictions that have been put on uh, on people with building codes and with these other national interferences and local issues? It's the same thing that happened in Carthage and Rome, Steve. Social degradation through social equality. Social degradation through social equality. I'm not sure I fully... Well, I had to take time to probably to process that thought entirely. Help me, help me through it here. Social degradation. You mean that the, the society itself is, is falling apart because we're trying to make everybody equal. Fox News Radio, I'm Brett Larson. President Obama sat down with congressional leaders to come up with a debt ceiling plan for nearly an hour this morning. House Speaker John Boehner was on the O'Reilly Factor last night and said this about the ongoing talks. Where's the plan? Where's the real plan? There is no plan. Following the meeting, the White House said they are still opposed to a short-term extension that could cause our economy harm and put us at risk for default in a few more months. The debt limit is August 2nd. An explosive early morning traffic accident involving a tanker full of gasoline led to the death of the driver. It happened on Route 1 near Boston, spilling gas around the crash site. It's our opinion that the uh, most of the gasoline that did spill into the drainage system, into the brook, was consumed by the fire. State Department of Environmental Protection spokesman Ed Coletta. Singer Amy Winehouse has been found dead in her London home. Winehouse was 27. Fox News, we report, you decide. If you love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servitude better than the animating contest of freedom, go from us in peace. We ask not your counsels or your arms, crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your chains set lightly upon you and may posterity forget that you were our countrymen. Samuel Adams The time is near at hand, which must determine whether Americans are to be free men or slaves. George Washington and what country can preserve its liberties if its rulers are not warned from time to time that this people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Thomas Jefferson. Posterity, you will never know how much it costs the present generation to preserve your freedom. I hope you will make good use of it. If you do not, I shall repent in heaven that ever I took half the pains to preserve it. John Adams. I sincerely believe that banking establishments are more dangerous than standing armies, and that the principle of spending money to be paid by posterity under the name of funding is but swindling futurity on a large scale. Tom Jefferson. Government is instituted to protect property, this being the end of government. That alone is a just government, which impartially secures to every man whatever is his own. That is not a just government, nor is property secure under it, where arbitrary restrictions, exceptions, and monopolies deny the part of its citizens that free use of their own faculties. James Madison. It would be an absurdity for jurors to be required to accept the judge's view of the law against their own opinion, judgment, and conscience. John Adams. Whenever the legislators endeavor to take away and destroy the property of the people or to reduce them to slavery under arbitrary power, they put themselves into a state of war with the people who are thereupon absolved from any further obedience and are left to the common refuge which God hath provided for all men against force and violence. John Locke. It is in vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here, idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take. But for me, give me liberty or give me death. Patrick Henry. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. God. The first choice when you want breaking news. KFAR 660 AM. 